Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity. I'm Sherry and this is... I'm oh, Roberta. Roberta. We are here today to talk about one of my favorite topics, recreation and the importance of recreation for our friends with disabilities, especially those invisible disabilities, um, like and, and, uh, autism, uh, intellectual disabilities, and, and of the like. A lot of times we, we tend to focus on people with movement issues, but today we're gonna to talk about everybody and everybody's need for recreation. Like, Sherry, what do you like to do in your spare time? I like to go hiking. Um, I do the treadmill every morning. I love to be out in nature though. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, my son, Nathan, does a lot of different activities who has Down syndrome, but we'll get into that in a few moments. Yeah, we'll talk about that. It's important for everyone to have recreation, recreation time, time with your friends, time to be outside, time to get moving. Um, it, it's something that gets overlooked a lot when planning the day for uh, kids with disabilities, um, and especially adults with disabilities. I think what we tend to do is pack their day full and, and try to always make things stimulating and challenging. And I know I also like to spend time outside in nature, just take a nice walk in the woods um, with my dog, but that's not everybody's cup of tea. We tend to pick things that we're good at and that are comfortable for us because it's, it's recreating, it's not working. Um, so when, when we're introducing recreation options to our friends with disabilities, we're gonna look, look at their, their preferences and their likes. I know that um, I have a couple of friends that taking them on a walk in the woods would just not be fun for them. It would not be, well, it'd be recreation for me. It would not be recreation for them. They prefer to, to move their bodies to dance and listen to music and, and socialize that way. They would prefer to go to a dance party or, or play a, um, a, a dancing video game so that they could en enjoy moving their, their bodies that way. Um, in reading, I found it, I came across a really great article and it's published by the company Rifton. And Rifton, if you're not familiar, is a company that manufactures adaptive equipment. So their target audience are people who work with people with disabilities, but and like the physical therapy, occupational therapy end of it. And this article is really great in talking about, you know, how to pick something that isn't, that is actually recreational for someone, but is also going to provide them with the social connections and the movement benefits and the health benefits of, of recreation. I know it's very important, you know, um, today we seem to pack all children's days like full of activities. And I remember when my older son who's typical was like, I just need to relax. Yeah, so relax for a few minutes. it's okay for people to have chill time to be lost in their thoughts or, or do what they need to do, listen to music or whatever. I, I think that's also an important piece, you know, because even today we jam pack typical kids days and we jam pack yeah, yeah. the special needs kids day. Sometimes yeah, kids always, just need to relax. Yeah, we're always looking at building skills right. and being stimulating and challenging and keeping their and forget that they're human beings too. So they need some downtime, some time to, like you said, be alone with your thoughts or, or just do something simple like listen to music or have a chit chat with a friend, maybe free draw or, or something like that. But there, um, there, this article talks about the importance of the social connection and having those common interests and making, have, making friends through recreation activities. But it also talks about the, um, the importance of movement activities. So if, you're, if your loved one or the person that you're working with isn't somebody who likes to get up and move, try to incorporate things that they like into their movement activities. Like if they don't love to go for walks, play some fun, upbeat music while you're going for a walk. Though, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of walking with headphones on, are you? 
Um, no, I mm -hmm. like to listen to Mother Nature. I like to hear the yeah. birds chirps and the squirrels and the chick chipmunks rustling through the leaves and the fish. The guy flash. running behind me. Man, the other day I was lost in my thoughts and a guy ran up behind me, scared me to death. So, yeah. well, you and know, where I go hiking, there's a lot of mountain bikers. So you always want to be able to hear them like coming up on the left, you know? Yeah, you want to have your ears on. Yeah. Um, so I guess to sum it up, and we're going to put a link to this article. It's an article from 1998, but I didn't really read anything outdated in it. Um, it does talk about the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, but that hasn't been updated again, to the best of my knowledge. But um, yeah, take a read through this and it talks about like the, like I said, the benefits of recreation, how it's good for your, your physical, your mental health. And it also helps you um, to make some social connections when you have something in common with someone else, especially recreation. Um, thanks for watching. If you yes. make sure you you hit all those notifications, I know we're Zoom today, so I don't know if our buttons are at different places, but don't you forget know, like, to like it, share, it, share subscribe, subscribe, bell notifications, bell notifications, so you get our weekly videos. And we'd um, love to hear a comment from you if you want to know more about recreational opportunities for people with disabilities, or if you um, if there's another cover topic. any any topic on disabilities any topic any disability and we're always looking to learn something new so we don't mind doing the research you know she's a special education teacher so she has a, a broad range of people with disabilities she has dealt with through the years i'm a mother of a child with down syndrome so kind of know all things dis, uh, down syndrome yeah. <laughs> but they're so our, our expert but I know parents who have like a child with Down syndrome who's also on the spectrum and or who has right. other health care issues. So, um, you know, I have a wealth of knowledge as well as same with my own son who was a cardiac baby and as well. So, you know, we cover a lot of different topics. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, we, hope, we, appreciate we hope you enjoyed you. this video. We appreciate you. Yes. Mwah. Thank you, guys.